Uh, well, obviously, uh, Rutgers came to play early. Their intensity affected us early in the game. Uh, I like to give them credit for that. Um, they were. Uh, they started a bigger lineup this this game against us on purpose. Uh, presumably, uh, would be for defense and rebounding. I think it worked. Uh, early on, we really struggled to score the basketball, uh, and uh, the lay. You know, the layoff stuff is an excuse, which I don't really believe in. I think that uh, you know we got enough older guys. We got to we got to make sure we're ready to play. What we said afterwards in the locker room, you know, it's a great win. Uh, we had uh, a lot of things going against us, but we turned it around, got ourselves in the bonus, and we were able to get to the foul line enough to get enough points to get ourselves going. Uh, we started getting our fast break going in the second half. We started work uh, executing the defensive game plan and the offensive game plan. Uh, we just weren't playing well early, but I give Rutgers credit for that. And, uh, we tell our guys, you know, get used to it. Get used to it. You got ten more. And then you got the Big East tournament, hopefully the NCAA tournament. There are no more games where the other team's gonna walk out with the white flag and then days are. Those days ended around Christmas. How much would love to Justin Jackson getting in there? Uh, he was tremendous. Um, you know, I think he got our he got his teammates fired up. He obviously got the crowd into it. Uh, he earned a start. The last couple days of practice, uh, he was great in practices. I knew he was going to play well tonight. It's very, it, it's not that complicated basketball. You can tell the guys are pretty focused, uh, and he's hungry to get get more minutes. And, uh, I've been trying to make some adjustments, get him the ball closer to the rim on our in our offensive stuff. But uh, he was great. But, you know, a lot. And, and I think he led the way, but a lot of guys stepped up. We held him to thirty percent in the second half. You do that, you're going to win a lot of games, a whole lot of games. You hold a team to 30% in the second half, you're going to, you're going to win ball games. We, we defended the three-point line much better in the second half. Is that the closest you've seen Justin to the way he was, maybe his freshman and sophomore year? Yeah, I mean, I don't remember. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I don't think that's fair. I, I think it's, you know, he played sparingly as a freshman. Yeah, but he played with a lot of energy. He's played with energy all year. I don't think that would be fair to say that he hasn't played with energy. Um, he stayed out of foul trouble, would I give you that? So then you can, you, you can continue to run around blocking shots down the court You stay out of foul trouble. Um, I think you would probably notice it more because his freshman year he was the fourth post guy. So when he got in there and jumped around, everybody loved him. He smiled and he came out after he fouled two people. Really quick. <laughs> He's just out there more. You know, it's, it's hard to be that way all the time when he's out there more. He's an older player now. He plays more minutes. So a rough night for Cash. Um, got the early foul trouble. He did hit the big shot for you that gave him the lead. But does he still struggle physically? Uh, I think mean, he, he just – no, I, I, I think he, he's fine. His knees structurally are fine. Um, he didn't have a lot of practice. He only had Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Monday and Tuesday. It's not, you know, so – Conditioning probably not where it needed to be, but at the same time, uh, you know, he mentally did some things tonight that he knows better. He had a couple passes that were beyond my comprehension, and a uh, couple fouls that I thought the aliens had abducted his body. You don't feel like he got into it. You Hold on a second. You don't feel like it'll linger and cause no. some issues. No, yeah, it's not. Him fouling a guy at half court has nothing to do right. with his knee. Him throwing a bounce pass to the other team has nothing to do with this team. Now, there were a couple times that looked like he kind of nah, did yeah, right? No, nah, he's fine. Trust me, okay. he's fine. All right. If he wasn't fine, he wouldn't be playing. That's one thing I can guarantee you. You got in his face on the as bench. As long as I'm up here, the guy's ain't going to be. You got in his face on the bench and he got kind of, got him, kind of walked away. Yeah. Was that just the Yeah, I, you know, you, you, talk, you, don't, you talk you talk back, you, you bring that on yourself. I'm not, I wasn't really in the mood to hear anybody's answers. Whether it was him or Larry Davis, whoever said whatever they said. You know, today's player is no different than 20 years ago. The difference is people let kids talk back too much. That's not acceptable. My job is to help these guys understand how to handle themselves and deal with a boss and hold a job, be a productive member of society. And your opinion.
opinion doesn't matter in the workplace. The boss's opinion matters. I try to talk to them guys about that stuff every day. It's no different. You know, Whit calls me in or the president, oh no, they have an opinion on something. I got two choices, deal with it or get another job. <laughs> Talking back is not going to work. You know, and, and I try to teach my guys that all the time. He knows that. He was frustrated with the way he was playing. That's the truth. I would have been frustrated if I was him as well. I love him, but he's, a, in my opinion, he's the best point guard in the East, and he was definitely frustrated. Seagears kind of got them going in the first half, but didn't score in the second. Did you change anything up on him, or? Yeah, didn't let him stand there and play horse. <laughs> you know, the Rutgers got guys to make shots. You stand there and let them play horse, they're gonna make. Them. We did a better job of not standing there and letting them play horse. And then Justin obviously protected the rim for us uh, and checked it a, a little bit as well when they got down the lane. They had five three-pointers in 17 attempts in the first game. They had six to make Six for 10 at that. Might want to get a hand. Yeah. Back to defensive execution of the game plan. And then looking at, you know, looking at us like you were surprised he made it. <laughs> Even late in the game, the two, you know, last two miles hit. I mean, they had no made threes until Miles uh, Mack hit the last two. They probably were surprised since they were five to seventeen in the first game. Hey, I wouldn't be. This guy shoots forty-seven percent from three. You know, we show enough film of him making them five feet behind the line. It really shouldn't be a shock. He shoots it in your face, and he makes it. Execution of the game plan is the key. Every game is World War Three, uh, and all I care about now is seat call. I'm already concerned about it. That's all that matters. Our so our position in the league. Where we're ranked, where we're at this time of year is all relevant to me. We got to make sure we get rest and get ready for our next game. When they ring the bell, you got to be ready to come out playing on Saturday at 11. And if you're not, you will lose. Today I was proud because we could have got beat. Uh, it was it was easily could have happened tonight to us. We really easily could have went down. The kids gutted it out. It's a credit to them. Um, it's nice to be able to coach a team that has enough fortitude to dig in and get a win when they were on the ropes. And, and the guys really dug in. And they, they knew how to dig in, which was patient on offense, get to the foul line, and on defense, get one stop at a time. Is there is there a common thread, you think, to some of the, the slow first halves offensively and the big second halves? There's no lot, obviously. No I would say it's a common thread in college basketball. I think, you know, the way the game's officiated has got some of those something to do with it yeah. um, the way the benches are configured where we can call out the other team's plays we, you know I got the world defense in front of me so we can hold teams down we held them to 15 last time we had Marquette to 13 and it goes both ways they're calling out every play we run right in front of their bench um, I think that you know scouting report has a lot to do with its size strength physicality there are no secrets I mean, you know, at times officiating. Not that it's bad, it's just, you know, it gets to a, you know, they, the one thing about Big East officials, they don't want to get in the way of the game. They, this is the last thing they want to do. When you get guys that get to a point where they, you know, they know when they got to start calling stuff. And then, then the kids got to adjust when that starts happening. So that's a part of it. Seems like it's happened more with, with you guys this year. No, it's happening with everybody. You just with don't it. watch everybody else. <laughs> See, I do. Yeah. It's an epidemic the scoring, especially in the first half yeah. of games. But at the end of the day, you win a Big East game by eight, get something to eat, actually might sleep. I don't care how many points we score. With the um, with cash, cash not playing is going to affect our score right. in the first half. Yeah, with him coming out with the two fouls. And, and That's going to affect your score. Check. Are you pleased, though, with what came in behind now? I thought G did a lot of good things tonight. You know, um, he's a confident free throw shooter too. You know, which helps you late in the game. It bodes well for his future. Um, you know, it's at times. You know, he doesn't want to make a mistake out there. Um, sometimes he, he's got to be a little more aggressive on offense. But uh, Shaq and Jermaine didn't get to do a lot tonight. Um, but uh, you know, that that's uh, onward and upward. They're playing behind really good players. They, you know, at times they got to raise their intensity level a little bit. But we got SK the ball enough uh, when we were struggling. I think a big key was our fast break in the second half. You know, we started pushing the ball the way we practice. You know, and stop worrying about the scoreboard and just just play the game. We have a tendency to do that at home. That's my 
theory. Whether it's right or not, it's probably be as, as close as we could all flip a coin. Your theory may be better. Mine is we play we play with stress at home. Like we're supposed to win by 30. And it took, takes us a while to get lost in the game and just play. But we think we're supposed to be perfect at home. It's not realistic. For anybody. It's not realistic. You gotta just play the game. You don't get the win because you're at home. So when the other team's playing well, you can't, oh well, it's gonna be a close game. Every, all these games are gonna be that way. But I think we, that I think that's a big factor. We play with way too much pressure on us at home. It took us in the second half, you could tell our guys forgot where the game was at, what was going on, what the score was. They were just playing. Shots start falling, guys are on the attack. A lot of standing around looking at the score. Oh no, can't play that. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thanks.